Do you have a small office slash studio with big ideas, but you're not sure if you can make it work for all your needs? Well, I have some unique ideas and recommendations you're not going to want to miss. So let's get to it. If you're a content creator, you may find yourself in the same predicament as many others. You just don't seem to have enough workspace. And I know firsthand how difficult it can be to transform a small office into a studio slash workshop slash print shop. This office is just nine feet by 10 feet. There's no closet and no storage. I mean, one could say it's just simply a big closet. So it's imperative to be creative with every single square inch of available real estate. I'm going to give you a complete walkthrough of this space, and I'm going to share how I transformed this small office into a working studio office. So let's start with the desk. Now, I like this desk, don't get me wrong, but I think it's too big for this office. I could have made do with something far smaller, but I wanted a solid workstation, one that wasn't going to wobble around as I, as I worked in the space. And, and I used this BenQ monitor here, which is quite heavy on the desk. And when you get the two together, you know, you can get a lot of wobble. And I certainly didn't want any of that. But this desk is primarily used for post-processing images videos and the occasional voiceover mic, or excuse me, the occasional voiceover using the Rode NT mic. And the surface area is large enough that I don't have to put everything away. I can leave things out like my keyboard, my trackpad, my Wacom tablet, so it's always ready for use. Plus, I still have enough room for a few decorative items as well. I think the point is, is to have a functional desk, one that does what's needed using as little real estate as possible. The more things that have to be stowed or rearranged, the longer it takes to get set up for a video. Now, I've struggled to get the right light in here for the atmosphere. And in addition to post-processing, I use this office for general writing and, and to develop ideas for my content. And I think the mood or the atmosphere of the office plays a large role in one's ability to concentrate. I wanted warm light for brainstorming and relaxing in here, but I also needed a backlit monitor for post-processing images. A backlit monitor is easy on the eyes and allows me to see the keyboard and other items while I'm processing images. I use the Media Light Mark II. It's a 6500 Kelvin light that's perfect for color grading on this BenQ monitor. As far as the ambiance lighting goes, I placed two 57 inch tube lights in the back corners. I really struggled with this. These have a 27 to 6000 Kelvin color range, which is perfect for that warm ambiance I'm looking for. Plus, I can change the color temperatures to daylight settings, which is great for working with prints. When it comes to printing, I use this Architect lamp here. Now, it has an aperture B7C bulb in it, and I can basically dial that in to 6500 Kelvin, and I use that for inspecting and viewing prints or negatives when I'm shooting film. Honestly, if I had more space, I'd have one of those big, huge, variable height motorized desks that I could use a, a BenQ floor lamp with for inspecting prints. But, you know, we have to make do with the space that we have available. And while we're on the subject of lighting, I use two main lights for filming my YouTube videos, and I'm a big fan of Aperture's Amaran line of lights. So I use the Amaran 200DS as a key light, and I have an Ap Amaran 60, uh, yeah, 60D as a fill. The honeycomb grid that I use on my key light is just fantastic for, for soft directional light, and I really like the look of it. But, well, you be the judge, and you let me know what you think of the lighting. On that note, I have, these are basically two 33-inch Aperture Light Dome SE soft boxes that are just fantastic. I've got those in the corner as far back in the space as I can get them. And I tried the Light Dome, um, the Light Dome uh, Mini, but it just wasn't as good as the SE. The, it just wasn't as soft. I could have gotten away with using Mini, but the softer light of the SE just made such a big difference, at least in the small room. These soft boxes come with three different diffusers, and basically I have both of these double diffused for the softest light I can possibly get out of them. I also use a hair light or a backlight, if you will, to provide a bit of separation between me and the background. It's also, surprise, it's also an Amaran P60X. This is an LED light, a bicolor light. One advantage of using all Amaran lights is being able to control everything using the Citus Link app. The app's great for controlling lights either individually or all together. Now, you may be wondering what's holding up all these lights. Well, I use two Impact Deluxe Varipoles, and they're mounted horizontally, not vertically, horizontally. These Varipoles are designed to be installed vertically, though, spanning basically from the ceiling to the floor, not wall to wall like I have them. Although these are pretty secure and tightly mounted, for added security, I installed support brackets screwed into the wall studs. These are just simple little 
extra wide shower rod holders that I found on Amazon. I thought about adding a security wire and basically screwing that into a stud in the ceiling, but I don't think these lights are going anywhere. With just a couple of lights on them, I found it easier and just more practical to suspend them from above rather than vertically. Plus, these varipoles remain in place and they provide a convenient way for adding any additional accessories that I might have down the road. On a side note, there are several other options available for overhead hardware that are designed specifically for hanging lights and other items from the ceiling, so you might want to think about that. I mount everything using Varipole Impact Super Clamps, which is uh, the ratchet handles. There's a couple different handles, but I like the ratchet handles. These are fantastic, and they just do a great job at mounting and being able to position anything in any direction on the Varipole, and, uh, and that's what makes them so good. That leads me to one of the more unique items I have installed. I'm using a K&M mic boom attached to an impact super clamp. Now, this allows me to easily deploy the mic for use, and it allows me to conveniently store it out of the way when it's not in use. I added an extra counterweight for balancing. Basically, the added counterweight makes it easy to, to balance and position the mic just out of frame. Now, due to the long extension of the boom and the weight of the mic, the added counterweight also prevents the varipole from, from kind of twisting and pitching my lights up and down. So, super handy. Indeed, it was a struggle to come up with an idea that allowed me to keep the mic out of the frame while conveniently stowing it when it's not in use. The, and I thought about a mic stand, but the, the footprint of a mic stand is just far too large for this small office. So, hanging it from the varipole I already had in place seemed like the way to go. Anyway, I use a, a Rode NT small diaphragm condenser microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. Now, I love this mic. In fact, you're hearing it now. And, uh, but, but it's a condenser mic, and it picks up the slightest noise from anything in the room, certainly anything in front of the mic. I did add several sound panels to treat the room. It's not perfect, but these sound panels, they make a significant difference. I have several panels on the wall and a few on the ceilings. The Elgato wave panels perform quite well at reducing reverb in the room. I'm not a sound engineer, but the before and after is just undeniable in this office. I place the Elgato panels based on the mic locations and where I plan to do most of the filming. And for the remaining panels, I use 24 by 36 inch corrugated plastic boards. These are also known as core plast boards. I use these with 12 by 12 inch foam panels that I got off of Amazon. Surprise. I opted for the two inch thick panels for the ceiling and the one inch thick panels for the two back panels I have on the wall. Really, I was just experimenting with these and uh, there's a lot of debate on YouTube over how well these perform. And in my humble opinion, I think these work pretty well and they're, they're, they're cheap, they're inexpensive and they're easily assembled. And basically I just put these together. I just sprayed each uh, foam panel with some 3M adhesive, attached it to the core plast boards and placed them on the walls uh, and the ceiling using 3M command strips. It's quite easy. And they seem to be holding up quite nicely right now. I could cover the entire room, but I think that's one advantage of having a small room. There's less reverberation in a small room to contend with in the first place. But you be the judge. You let me know what you think of the audio. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention these blackout curtains. Having blackout curtains allows me to easily control the light in the room, regardless of what's going on outside. I prefer natural light, but artificial lighting is much easier to manipulate when it comes to filming YouTube videos. Not having to make adjustments for changing light means exposure and white balance are already set, and I can simply press the record button. I don't have to change a single setting on the camera. But in addition to controlling light, these blackout curtains greatly help with the reverb. Indeed, these curtains, they're sound absorbing magnets. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I don't have a closet or storage in this space, and that's, that's a big disadvantage. So I use these little cubicle shelves here, and they seem to be the best option for storage and organization, although I'm still looking for other options. I did leave some space in the office for stashing a few camera bags for easy access. One thing that's helped me provide a bit of extra room is this, well, let's just call it my video center. This is an inexpensive laptop computer table I picked up from Amazon. I bought this because of its versatility. After attaching a Manfrotto table mount, an audio interface, and a few other accessories, I was able to turn this table into a one-stop shop for creating YouTube videos using minimal space. I could add the mic, but I like it where it's at right now. And uh, this little simple setup, it allows me to just sit down, hit the record button, and the show's on. There is a bit of method to this madness. It was important to have the computer and the audio interface behind the mic. As I mentioned earlier, a condenser mic picks up sound very well. However, the mic's cardioid polar pattern, it does a great job of picking up sound from the front of the mic, but not so much from behind the mic. 
So keeping the computer behind the mic minimizes picking up noise from the computer fan during recording. So far, this has worked out pretty well. And as you can see, this little table, it also doubles as a charging station. When I'm finished recording, it just rolls right back into the corner, ready for the next session. While we're on the subject of trying to minimize audio noise, I should mention that I use a Synology NAS for backing up all my images. Now, if you don't know what a NAS is, it's a network attached storage, and most of these produce a fair amount of noise when, when they're in use. Anyway, I eliminated the noise in the space by completely removing it and placing it in another room. Now, I can still connect to the NAS uh, wirelessly, but the best part is that I ran a network cable from the other room into this room, basically connecting the two rooms. And this allows me to access the NAS with a 10 gigabit connection, a much faster connection. A small office may be all we have to work with, but we just have to be creative on how we manage it. Let me know if you have any specific questions about any of the gear that I've talked about. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my video, Tripod Center Column versus Without Center Column. Basically, it's a vibration analysis. I'll leave a link uh, to that video in the video description. And if you like this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you on the trail.